a 43 year old lady born of a non consanguineous marriage presented to us with decreased vision in left eye more than right eye since 6 months she had poor vision in both eyes since childhood on examination her vision in the right eye was 2400 improving to 2100 with correction and was counting fingers at 1 meter in the left eye on examination blue sclera was noted in both eyes there was global corneal ectasia in both eyes with limbus to limbus corneal thinning nuclear cataract was present in both eyes grade 2 and grade 3 respectively in the right and left eye op scan of both eyes showed generalized corneal steepening on the elevation maps very high keratometric values and irregular astigmatism with generalized corneal thinning thus we diagnosed the patient as having keratoglobus in both eyes with cataract which is more in the left eye and blue sclera due to the patient's refusal for keratoplasty in view of follow up issues and phaco emulsification having been described successfully in keratoglobus in literature we decided to go ahead with left eye phaco emulsification with foldable pcioil we wanted to avoid local anesthesia fearing the risk of globe perforation in a large eyeball and the risk of corneal perforation in case there was any inadvertent trauma to the already fragile cornea however we did anticipate complications like corneal tear and the need for penetrating keratoplasty and therefore used peribulbar block for this reason we had kept a corneal tissue backup ready and explained to the patient that emergency penetrating keratoplasty may be required we started with a few modifications in the surgical technique of phaco emulsification instead of clear corneal phaco we made a superior scleral tunnel and the limbal side ports were made extremely posteriorly this avoided the extreme thin cornea at the periphery during capsulorexis radial extensions were expected due to the anteriorly inserted gonios the anterior chamber depth and irregular astigmatism only had minimal effect on the visibility and the depth of field we were able to successfully complete the rexis even though we anticipated premature entry and were cautious we couldn't prevent it we made a 2.2 mm entry during phaco emulsification bottle height was reduced and minimal possible power was used to complete the phaco emulsification in the bag but in the process there was progressive enlargement of the left hand side port an iris was seen prolapsing through it to avoid undue stress on the zonules visco expression was used to remove the epinucleus through the main wound rather than using the phaco probe irrigation and aspiration was attempted using the bimanual cannula but during this process there was a sudden give away at the right hand side port leading to a corneal tear this tear was then sutured at this point we decided to use syncos cannula for aspirating the remaining cortex so that we have a stable and controlled system through a single wound iron par calculation was done using various formulae including srk2 srkt holiday Agus and Hoffer Q in the IOL master. We used op-scan readings for keratometry values, but this gave us varied results. Since minus five diopters, three-piece foldable IOL was the largest power available to us. We decided to use it for IOL insertion. We decided to avoid the main wound 
as it was very close to the tear from the right hand side side port. The other side port was 3 mm and iron was inserted through it. We used helon while inserting. The side port extended leading to a corneal tear which was sutured. But eventually we were able to implant the iron in the back. Suturing of the extremely thin cornea was adventurous. Corneal tissue backup was kept ready in case the corneal tears could not be sutured and penetrating keratoplasty required for tectonic support. Judging the depth and tightness of the sutures was challenging. Cheese wiring of the corneal tissue occurred during tightening of the sutures. This led to suture tract leaks which were difficult to control. Eventually, continuous leak from one side had to be stopped using fibrin glue on the cornea. The main wound was also sutured to provide adequate tectonic stability. On post-operative follow-up, the patient had 2400 vision in the left eye, which improved to 2000 with pinhole on day 1. The globe was tectonically stable with no leak from any of the suture sites. At follow-up 5 weeks after surgery, the patient's uncorrected visual acuity was 2000 and alternate sutures have been removed. Thus, from this case, as we plan for the other eye cataract surgery or for any other future patient, the hitches and glitches would be expected during surgery. But these can be conquered by keeping backup corneal tissue ready. The side ports could be made even more peripheral after raising scleral flaps. Simco scannula or coaxial system can be used for irrigation aspiration rather than the bimanual system for more control procedures through a single side port. The IOL power calculations are still a mystery and effective lens position prediction is a challenge. This is further limited by unavailability of lenses beyond a certain range. Finally, even though cataract surgery and keratoglobus was laden with anxious moments for us, but it made for an exciting surgery, especially when stable visual and anatomical outcomes were attained in our patient.